Hi all, my name is Thiago Cunha. Uh, I am a PhD student from the Indovian University of Technology and I'm a member of the Enhancing Lighting of the Internet of Things project. And today I'm going to discuss about optimizing power allocation for LED-based distributive MIMO optical wireless communication systems. Uh, as introduced by Professor Harrod, uh, power loading strategies are pretty important to improve the performance of uh, Li-Fi of optical wireless communication technologies. And MIMO is also quite important to extend coverage area and to achieve multiplexing gain. And, but then, LED is a limited device, we cannot push a lot of power on this component. How can we deal, how can we uh, build, to design uh, new power allocation uh, strategies to improve the performance of those systems in this kind of, kind of new environment that is different from RF? So sometimes, yeah, for Li-Fi, it's a wonderful technology, we have many uh, qualities, and sometimes we say Li-Fi can provide a huge unregulated bandwidth. But actually, usually Li-Fi is implemented using LEDs as light source. Uh, LEDs is also uh, one component that, uh, that have many qualities, but it also brings many challenges, aspects to be overcome uh, in a way to design one system that can provide high-speed data rates. Uh, they, high, they have one low pass be uh, behavior, they have nonlinearities, memory effects, they suffer with an efficiency drop, and they also suffer with the thermal drop. So we may think about, ah, if we push uh, current, uh, current density uh, to the LED, we've increased the current density, we can extend the bandwidth of the LED. And then the low pass effect can be not a problem anymore for high data rates. But also, if we push the current density to the LED, the efficiency at which current modulation translates into uh, photom uh, photons uh, decreases as well. And when we talk about with Li-Fi, uh, coverage area is also important. So if we sum both effects, uh, we are going to see that like, the throughput uh, increases and decreases uh, by the amount of energy that you push to the LED. So there is a, a clear optimal point at which we, we, uh, if we want to design one system that can provide high data rates, uh, yeah, the power, the power is uh, it's something important to think about. Uh, also, uh, there is a thermal drop uh, the performance of the system drops if the LED gets warm. So if you push a lot of power in the component, the performance drops. So it's power constrained. Uh, when we talk about Li-Fi and optical wireless communications, one stronger point is that light cannot go through the wall. But it brings security for the physical layer. But it also, it also means that if you block the line of sight link between the transmitter and the receiver, the connection is gone. So MIMO uh, with multiple transmitters in the ceiling can bring a solution to this physical layer in a way that multiple signals are transmitted at the same time. And if you block one of the line of sight links, we still have others to, to use. Uh, MIMO also brings the multiplexing gain and many other qualities. But how uh, can we do the power locations at the same time of all those uh, LEDs working uh, to improve performance? Uh, we have many differences between RF and optical wireless. But uh, I, would, I would like to bring you to the main point that RF is more, uh, the multipath, the reflections inside the environment is more important. So if we space the antennas by half a wavelength, the channel may be independent. But in optical wireless, uh, that's different. The line of sight channel is more important. The, uh, most of the energy of the channel, of the link, is in the line of sight link. So uh, the, the power of the channel is much, it's really dependent on the position of the user in the environment and on the orientation of the optical uh, device. And other diversity, as commented by our device, is pretty important in this kind of case. But then, if the energy of the signal is, is if the strongest uh, channel is on the LED closest to the user, uh, the Li-Fi controller has to know this uh, in a way to, to do the power location. Uh, then, can we use uh, the existing, uh, the already existing power loading strategies for R RF in this kind of new environment? So it's something that we're going to show and discuss. Uh, another point is that uh, when you have like those kind of multiple transmitters and multiple receivers, uh, if you talk in an RF, the received signal is uh, writing by equation one when we have one frequency dependent channel matrix. In this kind of case, uh, the channel uh, changes quickly with time, 
and with frequency. So it's pretty hard to have channel state information at, at uh, the transmitter in this kind of uh, multipath environment. But when we talk about optical optical communication systems, and we know that all the LEDs have the same uh, Lopez effect that is uh, quite predictable, we can decompose this frequency dependent channel matrix by one space dependent channel matrix that's not dependent on frequency anymore and one low pass coefficient. What this means? This means that we can easily provide channel state informa information at the transmitter and it simplifies a lot uh, the power loading strategies as we can uh, just as a use one low speed feedback channel to, uh, to provide the channel state information. And it also means that we can use the SVD decomposition of the channel, the single volume decomposition of the channel in a way to decompose the correlated channel in a set of independent parallel channels and do the power location strategies at the transmitter side with many power constraints on the LED device. So we do the power, the power location scheme uh, in a SVD domain when we have con uh, power constraints in the physical domain divided by the light emitting antennas that we have. So, as explained by Howard Heiss, uh, we have the Lopez effect. We want to maximize or to provide the best quality uh, of service to the user in a way to allocate the amount of power over this frequency bandwidth. But in the MIMO case, we have something different. Instead of only one transmitter, we have multiple transmitters working at the same time, and the Lafay controller has to know that we have this and with different power constraints. So, what is the best distribution of power over these multiple channels at the same time? And how can we model uh, this kind of new challenge environment uh, to provide one, uh, one better system to the users? So uh, in RF, sometimes we talk about one pair antenna power constraints, when the main reason to have this is because of the individual power amplifier that powers each one of the antennas. But what we have seen is that, like, in optical communications, we have much more reasons to have on parallel LED power constraints due to the limitations of the electronic device. Uh, about the power loading strategies that we may have, we may consider that, like, in RF, when we don't have tenor state information, we can uniform, uniformly spread power over the, the, over the space channels and over the subcarriers in a way uh, to, to achieve our, our performance. But due to the Lopez, Lopez effect of the LEDs, is that uh, approach also useful to us or not? One second approach commonly used in RF is also the uh, maximization of the achievable rates when we consider that the, the, the controller has one total amount of power and it, it's, it's able to load power over the antennas or over the LEDs. Uh, Freedomly, uh, we have freedom to, to share power, this, kind of, this amount of power among the LEDs or among the antennas. But what happens is that uh, the algorithm tries to push power on the strongest channels. In optical communications, the strongest channel is the closest to the, to the LED. So the algorithm is going to push um, a lot of power on the strongest channel, but it means that this LED can be overloaded, then we are going to fight or struggle with problems of clipping, distortions, and other uh, term effects, and so on. So is that also, from our, uh, this RF strategy, is also good for optical wireless? Can be not. One more uh, real model is when we teach to the Lafay controller, oh guy, you should live, have limits, you understand the limits of the system. So instead of uh, having only one power constraint, we set uh, many different power constraints for each one of the LEDs, uh, and teach uh, the level controller that you can uh, you have to maximize the achievable rate of the system, but you need to understand that one of those LEDs has uh, limitations. So instead of loading all the power in only one LED, the closest to the user, uh, we let the level controller to also uh, load power on the other LEDs that are, uh, are also using the system. So we are going to consider one scenario when we have one 4x4 MIMO optical communication system and the user is close to one LED. We plot the achievable rate of the system uh, for different uh, signal noise ratios and uh, we have the approach with the total power constraints. It's achieved the highest performance. But what you see is that like, the amount of power that is allocated on the LED close to the user is much higher than the power limits of the LED. So 
we are overloading this LED, then probably we are going to have the problems that we know that about the, with the limitations of the components. Uh, if we reduce this total amount of power uh, to, a, to an amount equal to the power limitation of only one LED, the performance drops a lot because the amount of power is pretty low. It can be an option, but yeah, that's not good. Uh, we can also uh, increase this uh, total amount of power to a level that if one of the LEDs is uh, start to be overloaded, then the algorithm stops. But what happens is that is that is not efficient as well. Uh, I I spoke a little bit about the uniform loading, but what you see is that like that's not efficient as well. Efficient as well due to, due to the Lopez effect. Uh, the best approach in that then for uh, practical implementation is the solution when uh, we adopt a parallel LED power constraint and we maximize the, the, uh, the achievable rate of the system. Uh, so as a conclusion of this work, uh, we explain that we have limitations on the LED device and we have to understand those limitations when designing uh, those kinds of new algorithms to provide a high, high data rates and a high quality of services to the user. Uh, but use the RF algorithms in this kind of new environment it's not something suitable to us, we have to do something more. Uh, the maximization of the shibble rate under a total power, total power constraint is not good to us, we have to think about something more. Uniform loading is not good to us as well because of the Lopez effects. Uh, then a purely deep power constraint has to be considered. So we are work, working with new algorithms with uh, lower computational complexity of, of the solution that we did here. Uh, and uh, to provide new algorithms for uh, uh, for a technology in a way to understand and explore the limitations of the LED device. I would like to thank you very much for your attentions.